Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson on rates of reaction and extent of reaction. In this lesson, we will continue looking at the factors that affect the rate of the reaction. So, so far, if we think about factors that affect the reaction rate, we have learnt about the type of reactants. Some reactants um, are very volatile, they react vigorously with each other, and some do not. We looked at the surface area where we realized that if we increase the surface area, we increase the rate of the reaction, the rate of the reaction. We have learnt in the last lesson about concentration of reactants, where if we increase the concentration, we increase the rate of reaction. And we looked at pressure of gases, and we learnt that if we increase the pressure, we again increase the rate of the reaction. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at these two factors, temperature of the reaction mixture and presence of a catalyst. What do you think will happen if we increase the temperature of the reactants? Perhaps apply collision theory to help you make a prediction. By increasing the temperature, we are giving the particles more kinetic energy. This makes them move faster, which increases the number of effective collisions. I think that means the rate of reaction increases too. Yes, it does. Good conclusion, Kanye. Can you think of an everyday reaction where temperature affects the reaction rate? What about cooking? When you want potatoes to cook faster, you increase the temperature. Good. Here's another food-related example. Fruit rots quicker in warmer conditions than in cooler places like the fridge. Right, great tools. Let's talk a little bit more about temperature that you learned about in the video in the last slide. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. Okay, so therefore temperature is directly proportional to your average kinetic energy, average kinetic energy of the particles. So how would this affect your Maxwell-Boltzmann curve? Remember that we learned about the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve in a previous lesson and the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve states basically that you've got energy on the x-axis and you've got number of particles on the y-axis and basically what it is relating is the number of particles versus energy within a container. So let's say for example at a specific temperature T1 we work out that this is we measure that this is the graph okay, the green one, is the graph that has all these particles with this amount of energy. So you've got very few particles that have got a little bit of energy. You've got lots of particles that have got medium amount of energy. And then we have, again, very few particles that have lots of energy. Enough, in fact, enough energy to have what we call effective collisions because they've got sufficient energy. Okay, effective collisions possible. I say possible, not probable, because there are two other factors, remember. Now what happens? At T2, what are we doing? We're actually increasing the temperature. So T2, the temperature is actually greater than T1. We've increased the temperature. And how can we tell? Because there are more particles that are above the activation energy because remember by increasing the temperature we increase the average kinetic energy so what happens is we have more particles above the minimum that have en enough energy which is above the minimum energy required or are more particles available there are more particles available for effective collisions Okay, and what's important about this, because if they ask you to draw this, is to realize that this container that you had, had the same number of particles, whether it's a temperature T1 over here, or whether it is a temperature T2, it's the same number of particles. So if you have more particles over here with a higher amount of energy, your peak over here cannot be the same height, it has to be lower it has to be lower than the, uh, the height of the number of particles when you've got a lower temperature. 
So the graph of something where the temperature is higher, the graph of the number of particles in the container versus energy, okay, if it's a higher temperature, the graph has to be shifted over to the right. So it's shifted over to the right. The peak is further up. Why? Because more particles have got more energy. Okay. Then also, because this is higher, this is going to be the shift. The peak is lower than the peak it was before. And grade 12, they look for this. So those are the things we look for. We look for the fact that you've shifted this graph over. So the peak has moved over. Okay, that the peak is now lower than the original peak and that you have more particles. This particular is higher, so you know that there are more particles with more energy above the activation energy level. Okay, let's look at the next thing. The last factor that affects the rate of chemical reactions is the addition of a catalyst. Remember, a catalyst is a substance that can take part in a reaction without undergoing a permanent chemical change itself. A catalyst lowers the activation energy of a reaction by providing a surface for reactant molecules to collide. So in the presence of a catalyst, more effective collisions will take place and the rate of a reaction will increase. We can increase the reaction rate of zinc with sulfuric acid with the addition of copper. So, in this case, copper is the catalyst. <laughs> See how the amount of bubbles have increased after the copper was added. Right, so let's talk a little bit about catalysts. You learned quite a lot about catalysts in the video in the last slide. Now, remember that a catalyst lowers the activation energy. Now, that you should know off by heart by now. But what you need to add into your knowledge is that it is, does this by taking, by providing an alternate path for the reaction it provides an alternate path for a reaction so in other words some if you look at this graph over here okay yeah let me just do this if you look at this graph on the left hand side okay this is a potential energy versus time period graph okay and normally normally your graph looks like this la, 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 la. up here activation energy is all the way up there and then I'm terribly sorry my draft is terrible okay so the activation energy required is all this bit over here okay now if we add a catalyst what do we do the catalyst lowers the activation energy so the catalyst comes over long yeah and it lowers the activation energy but what you need to understand is that some particles will still have enough energy to travel up here so they don't need the catalyst they can still go this high energy route but what it does do is it allows particles that don't have quite enough energy to be still be able to bond because they have lowered the activation energy required Okay, it might be easier to understand if you look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. Okay, so what I'm going to do quickly is redraw a little Maxwell-Boltzmann curve up here because I want to show you something. First of all, we know that if the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve just normally looks like this, okay, where that is activation energy. We also know that if we increase the temperature, this is going to shift over right it's going to peak it lower and it's going to have more particles above the activation energy which is the minimum energy required for effective collisions now i'm saying to you okay what would happen if i didn't have the temperature but i changed this whole thing by adding a catalyst and what happens is all it does is lower the activation energy so what it does is all it does is move this activation energy to the left. It lowers the energy required. So that line would move over here. And we can see it on this graph. Here is our Boltzmann Maxwell, Maxwell Boltzmann curve. Okay. Here is the original activation energy with only these tiny number of particles that have enough energy to have effective collisions. 
Now, if we add a catalyst, it lowers the activation energy, so therefore it ends up down over here. So now, all these particles, all these particles have enough energy to have to have the possibility of effective collisions. Okay, so please know the difference between this Boltzmann Maxwell um, distribution and this Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and know how to draw them or be able to explain because they like to ask this and you need to be able to explain it. Right. So to summarize all of the factors that affect rates of reaction, we've spoken about types, surface, concentration, pressure. We know that these three here, if we increase the, either the surface area, the concentration, or the pressure, we're going to increase the reaction rate. We also know that temperature, increasing temperature, increases the reaction rate. Okay, and the presence of catalyst, if it's a positive catalyst, will increase the reaction rate. So everything here is very positive, okay? But there's a couple of things I need to mention, and it's very important. First of all, you need to realize that the temperature wins every time. In other words, if I had to say to you, if I had to choose between increasing my surface area or increasing my temperature, which would be more effective increasing the reaction rate? It is always the temperature. In fact, just a 10 degree increase in temperature doubles the reaction rate. So the reaction rate is really affected by temperature. And it doesn't matter if it's an endothermic or exothermic reaction. It doesn't matter, in other words, if it takes any heat or gives off heat. An increase in 10 degrees Celsius will double the reaction rate. We're not talking about which way the reaction will go. Then there's one thing that's very, very important, and this is the way you state this. If I had to say in the exams, why does the reaction rate increase if I increase the concentration? You cannot just say, if, if I increase the concentration, why will the reaction rate increase? You cannot just say, oh, well, because it does. You need to say, and this is important, that it increases the reaction rate because and this is important, you need to be able to learn this off by heart, okay, because it allows for the possibility, possibility of more effective collisions per unit time. And that is very important. Let me underline the bits that are important. The possibility of more effective collisions per unit time. You have to state the per unit time. And it's all very well saying, oh, but we're going to get more effective collisions. But if those more effective collisions take place over a millennium, that's useless to us. It has to be over the same amount of time. Okay, if you're comparing millennium with millennia, fine, fair enough. But it has to be the same amount of time. And if you leave out that phrase, per unit time, you will get no marks for your explanation. So whenever they ask you why something affects the reaction rate, in a positive way or negative, or in a positive way, then you need to say because it allows for the possibility of more effective collisions per unit time. Okay, in other words, if I said to you, why does the concentration of reactants increase the reaction rate? It would be, well, there are more particles per unit volume, which allows for the possibility of more effective collisions per unit time. Okay, grade 12s, please go practice, practice, practice this. Go make sure you understand this. Make sure you can answer these questions. It's good marks in the exams. And I'm telling you they're going to ask you this stuff. So please go practice and then do the assessment in the turntable system. Have a great day.